Yo, yo, yo. So today we're going to be doing an ayahuasca ceremony. And that means fasting and a crazy, crazy night. And I think a storm's coming, so it's going to be an interesting one. It's Adrian's first time. First time. I'm super pumped. Bit nervous just because of the, the puking. I fucking hate puking. Shitting also possible, but I don't think hopefully you're not one of them. <laughs> the plan now is to pay for it. And in Mexico, if you want to pay for stuff to someone's bank, you have to go to 7-Eleven right here and pay in cash, which is the weirdest thing ever. So we're gonna get that done and then we're gonna have our last meal and that's it. All right, so we got our smoothies. Smoothies, a little bit of protein as well. Yeah. We've got an Italian vegan panini to keep me healthy for tonight. Veggie yeah. extreme, veggie extreme. There's a patty and then there's like a lot of vegetables. Okay, sweet. So I'm gonna eat this. It's gonna be epic. And then we're gonna go, I'm gonna get some nuts and a candle that I've gotta get and that should be me sorry for later on. So let's get it. So we are meant to only be eating raw stuff today. So we kind of fucked that up already. But as long as it's not got tyramine, I think it's fine and nothing bad will happen. So I'm hoping there's no crazy headaches or like being sick to fuck or anything horrible. Because a lot of the diets are just woo woo kind of stuff. Really you don't need to have a major diet, you just have two days before kind of clean and then avoid the stuff that has tyramine. So we'll see, this could be a famous last words. But I will find out later. Now we're gonna get a candle and some fruit as our offering, which is all part of the process. So we're at Soriana, my favorite. Let's go and get it. We got some bananas, some fruits, and then the pièce de la résistance. We got the Jesus candles because that's all they had. Okay, so it is nighttime, obviously. And now we're in Puerto Morelos, which is where the jungle is, I think. I don't really remember. We just get a bus somewhere. But we're a bit early and there's nothing to do here. So we're just gonna hang tight and then wait until everyone arrives and then go on an adventure. So I'm not gonna film it because I take your phones, but I will check in in the morning and try and get a little bit of video of the scene and see how we're feeling. And Adrian, you got any nerves? Or you just... Oh, mate, I'm good. I'm ready to go. I'm just hungry. Yeah, we're, we're, hungry. we're really hungry. And especially going by all these stands, hot dog and hamburger stands, I'm like, oh, check that. Just to grab one that Anyway, yeah, uh, I feel good too. Not nervous or anything. I've done it before, so just looking forward to it. I love the Australia. I, yeah. I was thinking of staying in Australia. Please protect us from the animals. <laughs> All right, we're back in Playa after a crazy night. This one hit me a lot harder than last time. And it was quite confusing, so I need to go and think about that. But what I'm gonna do is first get a shower, have some food, have a nap, and then I'll try and check in and explain some things uh, and recount what happened. Because yeah, it was very, very interesting and quite surprising how different it was from the last time. Yeah, I'm finally going to reflect on this ayahuasca experience. It's been a week, but I ended up getting ill. I don't know if it was just because my immune system was down and then it was cold or it was COVID or something. But yeah, I've been out for the count. To give you some background, the shaman we went to and it's the second time I've used them. He has you take four different plant medicines, two of which are optional, okay? And this is the kind of order that you, that you take them in. So the first thing you do is you're all sitting in the circle and you have something called rapey, which is basically a strong tobacco 
that they <laughs> fire into, into your nose via what only looks like a giant bamboo straw. So you basically stand up and then they put this in your nose and the guy, the shaman, he blows into it and it fires tobacco right up into your nose. Now this thing is something they say is mandatory. They want you to do it because it clears your airways and your sinuses before taking the ayahuasca. And it fucking really clears you. Like it gives you a massive, massive head rush. And then you start to feel it in your mouth as well, like burning. Um, and they say like, you know, you're gonna feel uncomfortable, but you just gotta take it and you're not allowed to refuse the second one. Cause you gotta do each nostril. So he does one, then there's a little bit of a weight, then he does the other one. I've kind of forgotten what it was like. And then you start to see the people around you like taking it, they stumble a little bit. <laughs> and then they get sat down and you just see them sitting there suffering. If you've ever um, smoked like too strong or too much cigarette or something when you're drunk and you get that head rush, it's kind of like that, uh, but even stronger. But yeah, so that was rapey. And then they did something that was mandatory, which is basically, I don't know what it's called. It's basically this plant liquid and um, they put it in your eye as eye drops and it's to help get better hallucinations or better visual hallucinations when you're on the ayahuasca. So this time I had it and I was fine. Nothing, I didn't really feel anything, but I was forewarning Adrian before because I remember it being like someone putting acid in your eye. It was fine for me, but he said it was absolutely burning. So I think, I don't know if it's because I've done it before or maybe I like blinked or something and they didn't get enough in, which I doubt. But yeah, the first time you do that, whatever it is, it, it's the worst pain ever I think I've experienced in my eyes. Even worse than like conjunctivitis. Like, yeah, you have that, and then you get onto the point where you're ready for everyone to have their ayahuasca and also the changa, which is the uh, herbs dipped in DMT. So I'm gonna head up to the roof because it's getting dark and talk about the meat then, those taking those two things. Okay, so much better. So that's us now onto the ayahuasca and the changa. So first of all, what happens is everyone gets called out individually to come and get your cup of ayahuasca and it's in a little shot glass because basically what they do is they bless every single cup. So you can't get a refund once you've paid because they don't give that cup to anyone else because they've all, you know, blessed it under na your name, your full name, that's your full name. So whether you're spiritual or not, that's just is, is what it is, right? That's part of their process. So anyway, you come up one by one, take your eye ask and you sit back down because you're all going to take it together and no one can be present who is not on the trip. So even the shaman and all his assistants, they all drink it as well. So everyone's on it, but they're obviously got a lot higher tolerance. So anyway, you sit down and then drink it all together and it's going to take about 20 minutes to kick in. So what they offer as an optional is something called changa. And changa is herbs dipped in DMT. So the active chem hallucinogenic chemical in ayahuasca. Now changa, you smoke it, so you're going to instantly enter a different realm. And if you ever do it, I highly recommend you do smoke it because it's going to help you get into the ayahuasca trip. Um, because it goes, you like go to t times 10, you hit the moon and then I ask you come back, back down more mild. But Chango only lasts for like 15 minutes or something. But what they do is the guy comes up and it's like a little pipe that he lights and you're going to take it in three times and hold your breath. You just start to see your world change before you. They say release it and you take another one, hold it and like on the third one, you don't even think you're controlling your breathing anymore. It feels like you could hold your breath forever and everything just fucking goes. Like you see all these colors, colors you've never ever seen in your life. Fractal patterns, but see like vines and snakes and shit. And for me, every single time that I hallucinate straight away, like I remember the first time, the whole circle of people, there's maybe like 15, 20 people in the group. They all levitated up around the fire and then the shaman levitated, turned into like an ancient Indian. The pipe turned into a massive didgeridoo. And then I just fell back and entered another world. So the first time I did it, I was quite scared because I didn't know what was real or 
what wasn't real, if I would ever come out of that experience. So like I was fighting it a lot and like my logical mind kept trying to take over, which is the worst thing to do. It means it just kind of fought against me. So you have to just like let go and let it do its thing. And this time, but this time it was more mild than I knew what to expect. So I just was like, you know, like welcome back kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that you lie down, that lasts about 15 minutes. And then after that time, the you can't kind of come up and then the ayahuasca kicks in. So the ayahuasca trip is a lot smoother to begin with, a lot more tame. And I kept thinking all this, all the sounds were, or I kept knowing that all the sounds were not real because of the last time. The last time I didn't know and it was only found out afterwards. So I had a, a really, really crazy trip because I didn't know that. So this time my like logic, my ego was trying to ruin the experience by by thinking those things weren't real by being cynical. Not that I was trying to purposely do it. That's just what the reality was. Like like when you're trying to get to sleep or something and you you try not to think about stuff to help you go to sleep and you end up just thinking about tons of things. That's like what it was doing. It was subconscious. But the ayahuasca like punished me for that. It took control of my body as like a demonstration of force. So what happened was it wasn't literally like I couldn't control my body. It gave me like a like having an itch where you can resist that itch, but eventually you just the, the itch is too much. You want to scratch it. It was like that. So I could resist it, but it made me do things. And what it was doing is it made me turn my head. So like I just had this insatiable feeling to turn my head in certain directions like this <laughs> like this as far back as it could go i'm lying down by the way um and that's what it made me do and then that kind of really helped get into the trip because i could see all right it is, it is stronger than me it is more powerful um but that because that whole process took so long it took forever on the first cup of ayahuasca to get me into the right state um, and then it took me to like an emotional place. Like I was crying a lot this time. Um, yeah, it was quite sad. And um, but I didn't I didn't feel scared or anything. It was just like emotional and like love and stuff as well, which is not really stuff I feel very often. So it was kind of crazy that it took me to that place. Obviously, I just thought I needed it. And then uh, I needed a second cup. So they basically tell you to start. If you need another cup of ayahuasca, you'll know. And I think they offer you like three or four through the course of the night. Last time I never felt like I needed one. I didn't need anything else. After the one changa and the one cup of ayahuasca, I was in another world. This time the ayahuasca told me I need another one. And it's the weirdest thing. Like it literally sat me up um, when it was time when the guy called out and made me say, yes, I want one. So, so weird like it's literally like the exorcist stuff something is controlling you but not scary and then on this next cup it kind of hit me very very quickly and it took me to a dark intense place so what you do in ayahuasca is you purge so you're sick i remember when i first heard about ayahuasca they someone told me this purging was like a, another drink they gave you and it made you sick but it's something in ayahuasca i think because you might purge, you might not purge, and it, it happens as part of your trip. So you're getting all the negativity out, but it is hell. Like I had like a really bad trip, I wanted it to stop. And what it would do is it would lift my whole body up and then like lunge me forward to be sick in this bucket. That like, you have a bucket, but I couldn't, and that would make me feel even worse. And then I'd bury my head in my arm, just wanted it to stop and I remember like seeing the shaman had like a devil face. But it's not that like I was having like scary hallucinations. It was more just like a horrible feeling, a feeling of like darkness. And I see that as like punishment for <laughs> my ego fighting ayahuasca. Eventually it stopped and you're just kind of there in silence, contemplating your thoughts. But you get so much out of it. Like I, you, I, I would ask it questions and it didn't give me direct answers, but I could ask like different questions and it kind of give you like the no. And it, it, there was this thing that would happen. Like, when I asked the right question, that was like the signal to me that I was correct. It made me like take in all this breath or like something would 
that a vision would happen the same vision every time when I was correct. So I've got some takeaways from it. Um, everyone always does, like in the morning you go and recount things. This time was a lot more confusing, like a lot of the stuff I didn't understand. But I mean, after I don't feel bad at all. And I'd highly recommend it to anyone. Like if you have trauma or you have anxiety or you're just not sure about stuff, you're like a, in a crossroads in your life, it's the kind of thing that can really, really help you. But I think you have to be ready for it. When I first found out about it five or six years ago, when I was traveling, I wasn't ready. But after so many years, you know, that hunger to try it, that curiosity and the, the point in my life I was in changed to a point where it's like I was ready to do it. Is it life changing? I don't think it's going to change the course of your life. I think that's you doing that. You were probably you know, on the path to do that anyway, but it can definitely give you some clarity and then help you make choices. And maybe that is the thing that changes the course of your life. Since the last one, I've implemented some things that definitely were a bit of a change. I've had different views on certain, certain things, um, but as like anything, it kind of fades and then doing it again, I thought it would like reinforce certain things, but actually it's just taking me on a different experience. Some of the stuff that happened this time as well, I need to kind of still like interpret. Um, but overall it was a great experience and like I say I'll link my shaman down here because I think that is a very very important thing if you get a bad person a bad shaman or they just don't do it right they don't set, set up the whole experience correctly you can have a bad time so that's pretty much it I mean I could have gone into way more detail I didn't want to have it to be too long a video though this was mainly just to put your mind at ease if you're ever considering it give you a bit more insight into what it is because i remember for so many years i was humming and hawing because people had given me diff given me differing information so hope you enjoyed it and hopefully i'll see you guys soon in uh, another 